السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, I wish you a good day and a good life for you and prosperous life إن شاء الله today and every day for every one of you wherever you are We we'll give our condolences to the people who died in the earthquake in Indonesia. And may Allah help them and all of you. And I wish that all of you, inshallah, will be able to contribute to help those people who are actually affected by this calamity. Today, as we promised before, it is economy and agriculture. Again, I talked about economy a few months ago, but let us talk about it again and again and again. And today I have to give the credit to my, uh, the, uh, my, my brothers who are helping me, Muhammad Nij, Muhammad Sheikh, and Abdurrahman Nahas, who helped me in the record time to get some information, which is more enough to start the discussion today. But actually, I could not, could not be able to put everything on the presentation, so we might have another uh, talk or two about agriculture and industry. Let me start with something that I mentioned a few months back. Economy for me is the productivity of every citizen in the, in, in the country. Economy equals productivity. If our citizens are not productive, we cannot build a strong economy. We have eight hours of work every day or nine hours or five hours or six hours. If the productivity or the outcome of each one of us is less than eight hours, our economy goes down the drain. But how can we make the citizen productive? By empowering the citizen, by giving freedom and increasing the civil liberty state, space, increasing the civil liberty space, and by discovering the potential of each individual. It's not just a talk or a joke or a statement. If we do not empower the citizens, we cannot build strong economy, even if we are a rich country. This is economy. The second statement, which is something mentioned by many scholars in the past, which I'm going to repeat again, the hungry nation cannot think properly. The hungry individual cannot think properly. Even there was a say, or a proverb in Arabic, if Isha, which is the time of uh, uh, last prayer for Muslim in the evening, and Asha, which is the dinner, the evening dinner or supper, come together. The ulama, the scholar said, make the Isha, which is the dinner, to be first. And do the asha, the, the, make the asha, which is the dinner, to be first, to eat first, then do the asha after dinner, which is the prayer. So the ulama said, eat, then pray. Eat, then pray. This is how I'm trying to discuss with you, young people, English speaking, okay, the, 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 the importance of not being hunger, hungry. My talk today is geared to the English-speaking community, especially the youth from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Malaysia, Indonesia, other places, and Europe, of course, and America and Canada. Hungry people does not have the ability to think properly. This introduction, as I said before, it has been written by Muhammad Najm and Ahmed Sheikh. This is, I think, this is Ahmed Sheikh. Agriculture represents the paramount necessities, necessities, paramount necessities, necessities, and the importance to what to develop, to developing countries and developed countries. Not only for the developing countries, but for the developed countries as well. Look around you. United States, Canada, Europe, they have a strong economy based on agricultural project, product as well as industrial product. Agriculture represents the paramount necessity and the importance to developing and developed countries. It's considered one of the most vital sectors 
and pillars of social and economic development in many countries. It's also the main source of food and raw material. Food and raw material which could, become, which could be the basis of a strong industries. Raw material needed for various industries. It creates jobs, definitely, for many, many, many people, millions and millions of people. It provides supplementary materials for many industries and increases financial rewards from the export of agricultural products. This is one definition. The second one, Muhammad Najm, he said that 38 million at least people in, in Africa are hungry. Are hungry. Africa has got 60% of world fertile agricultural land and still suffers from food shortage and importing food material. This is incredible. This is madness. This is madness. 60% of the fertile agricultural land, global fertile in Africa, and they have food shortages, 38 million plus or more people are suffering from hunger, as well as the, uh, the importing the food material from different countries. Agricultural empowerment, as Muhammad Nib said, is one of the most um, ancient, 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 if you remember the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. His mission in Egypt was to save Egypt, not only Egypt, to save the whole region. Because Egypt was the basket of food for the whole region. People used to come from what used to be called nowadays Iraq, Palestine, Syria, other places, Sudan, and others to get the food material from Egypt. So since that time, and before that time, in old ancient Egyptian, uh, Papillon, uh, Chinese, and so on, so on, so on, so it is agriculture. Even Inca in Latin America, Japanese, and others is ancient uh, agriculture, is, is ancient, very ancient, economic. Uh, Agrasha is one of the most ancient economical empowerment that societies cannot survive without it. It's one of the sectors that developed societies through gaining an immense local experience. We choose the agricultural sector that we need to develop through community needs based on national food security planning and strategy. This is Muhammad Najm as well. So what's economy for me? What is economy? I mentioned it earlier on. It's, product, it's the ability of the individual to be productive and useful in the society. Economy for me, the value of economy, economy is the cornerstone of any society. We cannot build a strong society or a strong nation or a strong state without strong economy. It's number one. Economy also is the foundation of stability. If you want a stable society, a stable country, a stable state, you have to have a strong economy. All right? Number three, it is a guarantor of sustainability. You see, stability, then sustainability. If you want to go to the bank to get a loan, they might ask you to get a guarantor for you. Here, economy is the guarantor for stable sustainable society. It's protecting social cohesion because if I've got a strong economy, I've got more jobs, people will be able to think properly, people will be able to connect, people will be able to uh, link to another community, people will be able to be above board, not fighting for uh, the resources because there will be more resources shared by everyone. Building societies, it is one of, the, one of the most important elements which you need to build society because you need money, because you need knowledge, because you need uh, uh, materials, products. You need, you need all these kind of things to build your own society and your own country and your own state. And the economy is considered uh, one of the factors of building society. Enhancing social change and renewal. If I've got this kind of, 
of a strong economy. So you will have the time to think. Once you think, you reflect. Once you reflect, you'll be able to make the change. Or you make the, the change which you can make a renovation or renaissance in, in the future. So when you look at it, as I said earlier on, uh, the hungry nation cannot think properly. Some of the states or some of the governments purposely let their citizens to do more than five or six jobs a day or two or three jobs a day because there is no much uh, vision for the individual to have one job then at the end of the day from three or four o'clock in the afternoon he or she will be able to sit down with the family to think and reflect and develop society. So such kind of autocratic dictatorship governments will be so happy to see their nations hungry and fight for food. Okay? Laying the pillar of re renaissance, as I said earlier, once you have the time to think, you have the time to look, reflect, Think the ability to produce new ideas, the ability is to become a pioneer, the ability of to be a change maker, you will be able to build the renaissance of your own country, then build a civilization which everybody uh, will enjoy your civilization as we mentioned before. So economy here, what's economy? It is cornerstone of society, uh, foundation of stability, guarantor of sustainability, protecting social cohesion, building societies, enhancing social change and renewal, laying down the pillar of the foundation of renaissance and building civilization. What is the foundation of economy? If you people in Malaysia or in Indonesia or in Pakistan or Afghanistan or whatever you call it, or in Africa, in South Africa or in Latin America, what is the foundation? It is natural and national resources First and last, the being dependent by exploring and discovering your natural and national resources first. This will give you the sort of source of stability and the independence in decision making process. Natural and national resources. What are the national and natural resources? What are these, which I mentioned in the previous one? First and most important is the human resources. The human resources, the human resources. You, me, the girl here, the girl there, the elderly man and the elderly, all those are the most important foundation of the natural resources. Because if we cannot utilize our human resources will never be able to build the economy. If we cannot empower our human resources, we will never be able. If we cannot invest in our human resources, we will never be able to build economy or to build society or to build a state. If we, if we ignore them, we'll make mushroom uh, clusters of people living inside as a, a place. Landscape, the land you have in the country, whether desert, whether mountainous, whether uh, valleys, all this land could be used for agriculture. But we have to find ways and new ways to cultivate different crops in different uh, uh, lands in our country. Number two. Number three, water resources. Whether it's rain, where it's rivers, where it's reservoirs, where it's lakes, where the seas and the ocean, when you can have do, do the desalination and use it for agriculture and, 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 and drinking as well. Agriculture is one of them as well. Okay. Local markets. What are the markets that we have in our countries? It's local means every individual citizen will be able to produce whatever he or she can at home and, and sell it in the local market. Don't ever and never in your life and my life ignore what we call local markets. 
where each and every one explore his or her potential to bring a small product. Katlemma, samosa, bakura, other 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 food items, other other handcraft, other uh, painting, and so on, so, and uh, old furniture, old materials, and so on. Uh, weaving, uh, clothing, uh, and others. Education should be a part, a part of the natural resource. We have to put it inside this. Monuments that we have in our countries, which uh, left to us from thousands of years gone by our ancestors to show us the way. It's a good uh, source of uh, it's one of the national resources. Elevation and topography, which as I mentioned before, the, 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 the mountains, the valleys, the rivers, and everything. Then, seas and the ocean, and mentioned this. All these are there in our countries. So, we, even deserts. We have to look at all these as resources, and we have to believe that these kind of resources have to be explored because it has a lot of richness inside it. Why agriculture? We talked about all these natural and natural resources. Why agriculture, especially agriculture? Why? Because number one, agriculture provides food and nourishment to every being in our country, in our society, in our community, whether it's an insect, bird, animal, fish, human being, and so on. It's number one. Number two, clothing. After the food is clothing, clothing for the human being that we needed. Okay? Different kind of material. Huh? Cotton, wool, wool comes from animals as well. Uh, furniture, which is the, the, the wood that we have from the trees, different kind of trees, mahogany, oak tree, uh, and other trees that we actually are using. Very, very expensive uh, wood that we have. Shelters, building houses. Some of the very old ancient houses are still in Japan and China, maybe a few hundred years ago, made out of wood, come from trees. Supplying and creating different industries, yes, but give raw materials, either from fruits or from vegetable or from uh, the straws, or other things which you bring from the trees that you have. Improving the climate. You can imagine the, 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 the immense impact on the climate when you see the greenery uh, of your country goes from side to side, from north to south, and from east to west. Stability of the climate. And the kind of beings or creations are living under this climate. Even the, the migrant birds coming or the migrant animals, as you can see it in Africa. Improving climate, creating different business enterprises, no doubt about it. Job creation, no doubt about it. Improving tourism. See, as I mentioned earlier on, people love to go to a green area. To relax, whether it's honeymoon, whether it's summer holiday, whether it's weekend holiday, to think, to refresh themselves in these areas. Building communities, yes, yes, again, creating cultural and artistic, poetic. You see, you look at the, the, the music coming from the valleys, the music coming from the mountain, the music coming from the desert, and the poetry and the painting, and the weaving, and the knitting, which reflects the culture of the farmer, or the shepherd, or, 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 or whatever you have it there. Even the literature, a lot of old novels, based on this kind of imaginative thinking of the author, which is beautiful when he or she describes the movement of birds, the growth, the growing and blossoming of trees and 
flowers and others. Transportation, these carts which we're still using up till now as a part of the history. Market monopoly. If you have a strong economy, agricultural economy, you can monopolize the product that you have, whether it's wheat or barley, okay, or milk and milk product, or meat, and so on, or cotton. So you can control and monopolize, creating new science and technology based on the product, based on the agricultural project, product that you have. Strengthening the national security, of course. If you have a stock, as Hazrat Yusuf السلام, he said, seven fat cows followed by seven skinny cows. Seven cows is actually where the climate was good and the, 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 the crops was actually, uh, 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 the productivity of the, of, of, of the food was, 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 of the wheat especially, was good. You have to store it. For seven years. These seven years allowed the state of Egypt at that time to go through the famine period safely because they have the stock. And he taught them how to keep the uh, seeds of the wheat in their husks. Strengthening the national security, of course, that's it. Building partnership with other sites. When, when you have a product, especially sustainable project, product and a stable pro, uh, product every year, you will be able to build partnership with different societies in your country or different countries as well. So this is why agriculture. And this agriculture is all homemade. All homemade. We can plant things in our garden, in our farm, or in our country. What are the most uh, powerful industries? This is something which I put to let us to understand what other industries could be very strong and taking the lead. Technology and the communication, of course, you know more than myself. Arms manufacturers, not for defensive mechanism, unfortunately, all the superpower now they are selling it. And these kinds of arms manufacturers are destroying, dismantling sites and countries and creating more displacement and more refugees and more dead people. Drugs industry, you see all the drugs, maybe the reward from arms and the drugs more than the reward from the technology. Pornography as well. As well, this is actually very, very profitable industries. Some of them are legal, some of them are, or, 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 or illegal. Petrochemical industries, media, drama, cinematic industries as well. All these are huge industries and making a lot of money. And we have to put on our consideration that this exists. We can talk about them in a different uh, uh, talk, inshallah. This message to all of us as young people. To all of us, who are the losing nations? Young people, listen to me. Don't ever follow somebody who tells you that you are poor. It's an absolute lie. Don't ever follow somebody who tells you that you are weak, strong. Don't ever follow somebody who tells you you are stupid, wrong. You're not stupid, you're not weak, you're not poor. You are the representative of Allah on earth, who Allah honored you as a male and female to represent him. And he gave you all the potential and he let humanity and the planet and all the creation of him to serve you. So you are not poor, you are not weak, you are not stupid. The losing nations are such a nation who changed their forest and the habitats into concrete building. And this is happening every hour, every minute, in different parts of the world, from the Latin America to the Bay of Bengal, to other places as well, in Indonesia and others. This is, I call this, myself, this is haram. 
This is my social fatwa. It's not, it is not religious fatwa. It is social fatwa because I'm a social worker. It is haram. Okay? Number two, haram, change their fertile agricultural lands into commercial and residential building. When you have a very fertile agricultural land and you sell it for personal profitability, it is another haram. Go and build your own commercial buildings and residential outside your area, which is agriculture, fertile, or the fertile land. We used to have green built our the major cities in different countries. Such corrupt government sold it and built on it and made profit, which most of the profit went in the wrong hands. It's another haram. Nations who will fill the rivers, lakes, water reservoir with sand, stones, and concrete. In the good old days, we used to see movie dramas where the river branches going to certain areas. Those small branches are not there anymore. On the contrary, where you are in England or you are in UK or other places in Europe, they maintain the little streams of water of the river and keep it because it is a source of life for different kinds of fish, birds, and small animals and insects, which is very useful for the climate and for the habitat. And we fell. This is another haram. Haram one, haram two, haram three. Social haram, huh? Social haram. Don't go and send me to one of the sheikhs to tell me I'm making new theological fatwa. No, it's social fatwa. Number four, do not invest in land reclamation and the construction for agricultural products. We have vast land, which is like desert land. We have to invest money to change this land into greenery. Because each land on earth has the potential to grow something. And we have to keep investing in this. Do not invest in building groundwater networks. Digging deep wells, canals. Yusuf alayhi salam, Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam, was one of the first people who made the canals from the river Nile in Egypt two, three thousand, four thousand years ago. Don't invest in building advocacy campaign to protect our habitat, to protect our climate, to protect our forests, to protect all this green land and fertile land. I have to teach children from the very young age at the kindergarten, from the kindergarten level to advocate for protection of our country, especially the climate, which includes all what I've said before. Polluting their water resources by dumping chemicals, sanitation, factories, this is some mistake in, in factories here, uh, waste and other uh, uh, material. We used to see this when you used to swim uh, when I was young in Alexandria uh, in the 70s or 60s, 70s. Uh, the, the sanitation comes to the Mediterranean and you can see it clearly. Needless to say, to see that this sanitation and this chemical and this waste of the and of, the, of the factories coming to the main branches of the rivers in different cities. And this is another haram. Here are seven haram. Seven haram, social haram, which I will call them again. Change their forests and habitats into concrete buildings. Change their fertile agricultural lands into commercial and residential buildings. Fill rivers, lakes, water reservoir with sand, stones, and concrete for commercial purposes. Do not invest in land reclamation and the construction for agricultural purposes. Do not invest in building groundwater network and uh, uh, greening, green, greening the desert. Do not invest in building advocacy campaign 
to protect the surrounding environment and habitat, polluting their water resources by dumping chemical sanitation and factories waste into the rivers. So this is my message to the youth. Wherever they are, whenever they'll be, do not believe somebody who can make you consumer, not producer. The easiest and most stable product that you can bring to your own country to stabilize your state is agriculture product. And from there, we can go forward. Most of the small European countries build their strong economy on agriculture, on uh, uh, meat, on milk industry, which come from the land. And this is something which you have to keep it like an earring in the ears of girls and boys. Don't sleep, don't blink, do it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.